It was motivated really by stories I was told when I was a kid by my parents, because they were both brought up in Small Heath. Both had connections with illegal bookmakers, as many people did in those days. My mum was a bookies runner when she was nine years old. And my dad's uncles, they were Peaky Blinders, they were illegal gangsters, and he told me stories about how they looked and how they dressed and how people felt about them and about how life was in those days. So I always felt that this was a drama waiting to be told and an opportunity came. And so, you know, my parents were kids when they witnessed it and they told the stories to me when I was a kid. So I always wanted to tell it through the eyes of a kid. It always began with that central character of Tommy. I always wanted him to be the second oldest, just so that, it, you know, it's not a natural thing for him to be in charge, proving that he's in charge for a reason. Uh, Aunt Polly was a real person who was my dad's auntie um, and was very, very formidable, apparently. And then the brothers, you know, families were big in those days, and I'm from a big family with lots of brothers and sisters and things, so I, just dealing with that, the way that people get along is, I think, quite interesting, and it's something that is in my background, so I do try and use it if possible. I think Achillean began with Tommy as a man with a mission and someone who was going to change things, even from the opening scene. He'd been in a situation where I think of him as someone who feels that he's sort of dead already, or everything now is a bonus because of what happened during the First World War. So now he can break the rules. You know, he's been broken by what he saw and what he experienced. He's experiencing success. He's getting what he always thought he wanted. And I think in series three, he has to question, is this thing that I thought I wanted all that it is meant to be? Is it really what I want? And I think that Killian has mapped that out beautifully all the way through. He's such a fine executor of, the, of, of a character's progress. And it's a long thing, you know, in TV, it's not like a film where you can sort of get your hands around it quite easily. With, with this, it's such a long-term long thing, and he's, he's done it beautifully. Paul Anderson, who's playing Arthur, particularly in series three, has a character who's at a crossroads because of the influence of a woman that he's met and married. And he is having to examine his loyalties to, to her, to his own family, and to the Shelby family. And in a way, he's finding out, is he able to escape? Is he able to do anything other than what he does at the moment? So, and I think Paul has tracked that beautifully as well. You know, all of these things, it's like a dance. It all goes hand in hand. And I'm always there with them, sort of between them, arm in arm with them, is Polly. And Helen is just the mistress of all of this. You know, she's, she's just so good at being scary, at being formidable, at being vulnerable, especially in series three, we find her vulnerability is much more. It's just such a joy to have actors of this calibre to take those characters on. It's really fun. You know, you think you know the character and you can play him for a while. You know, I know Steve, I know his wife, but you can never, ever predict what he's going to do. It's, it's so exciting to get the scripts because it, it always astonishes me what, what happens. People are so invested in the characters, you know, they feel like friends to the, to the audience. So it's important that you, you, you move on with them, take leaps so that the audience feel like they're going places. And I feel like he's done that very well this season. If the writer keeps at this level of quality, you know, then, then you're set. Then you'll keep getting directors as good as we have, we keep getting actors as good as we have, because everyone wants to be involved in great writing. It's really it.